So in Western Australia, it's not called um, Family and Children's Services or Department of Community Services. They're all just a um, bullshit name for all of them anyway, but it's called Department of Human Services, and none of them are human. They haven't got a heart, any of them. And um, so do you know any... This office, what is it called again? Maribooka. Maribooka. And um, who was the manager of that office then? Do you remember? I mean, you're only five. Do you remember any of the workers that could have helped you and, and they purposely left you there? Um, there was a girl called, or there was a lady called Violet um, Bow Sailors and a guy called Peter Chiller. They were both my docs workers. And do you think they're still working for human services over there? Well, Peter Chiller was convicted of pedophilia for my sister and Skip State. And he was a human services w- he was worker. An actual doctor, yeah. See, the, and this is what people don't want to believe. This is what the government don't want you to believe is that. It's full of pedophiles. Um, but we'll just, so what ended up happening there? They convicted how many people over that over this? Um, they convicted Greg, or Alan, in other words, but um, my foster dad. Um, he was put in jail for nine years. For how long? Nine years. Right. Um, also, they could, they finally found Peter Schuller. Apparently, he was locked up, but I'm not really sure. Never found out much about it until I met my parents. So I really I what? know what happened to me. And why did they put you in foster care in the first place? They accused my parents of handcuffing us to a bed, um, not feeding us properly. Just the in particular things that a mother and a father are supposed to do, and apparently they didn't meet their needs. And do but your older sisters? You were probably a bit young, but do your older sisters say it was lies, or did they say what did they well, say happened? Well, my older one of my older sisters, she's she's come to a certain point where she doesn't want to believe anything. She but chooses not to remember what's happened because it's that traumatic. Yeah, fair enough. I but it. my older sister, she fought the case through dots. Um, at, I think it was Canberra, at the actual Canberra courthouse, and he was convicted, um, and then he stood up on stand and so for his wife and say that we're going to come for the little one. Who was this, the docs worker or the other guy? No, that was my husband. So, which who's obviously got contacts inside child safety, who are all pedophiles? Yeah. So, yeah, if they had a follow, oh, Oh yeah. So if they had followed this up, they would have um you would have um they would have exposed the whole pedophile room, you would do. No, it it turned into one of your biggest pedophile rings in the system. Right, but you were in Western Australia, so how did it um They changed our last names from King to Rasmussen and we were pretty much non existent. We went to my aunties. And my parents, we can, we were never able to see them ever after. It took us five years. I was probably about ten, just going on eleven. And from then on, from Western Australia to New South Wales, I had no contact once I moved to New South Wales. I came home to Wales back then. And so, how are you with your mum now? Your dad. I'm like any other daughter. I think we have pretty much our ups and downs, but. She's a brilliant mother. Do you feel you were ripped off by, by the system? I was kidnapped for six years of my life. They took away my childhood. They yeah. took everything from me. I, sometimes, like, I don't even want to be here because of all the things that have happened, but I have a big thing in my life at the moment. That's my little girl, and she means everything to me. And um, so you, you think, we'll talk about the little girl um, later, I'm going to go through the whole um, story. Do you, you think you've dealt with this better than your older sisters? Well, my family say I'm pretty much a strong one. I've been able to deal with her for quite a lot of years. I've run back a few times to go to get info. I hate them in the past, and they just been my life. So I, I use dogs just as much as they do my family. And so after this um, Western Australian one, did you, what, what um, doc's office did you deal with then? Um, I dealt with Canberra. So you, um, that was after Canberra, you, you went with your auntie? Well, we were, what happened was, like, after this whole conviction happened, my doc's worker, 
this cute guy and they changed their names and we just to New South Wales into a, a place called Fargo actually. Yeah. I went to school there. Um, it was alright. And then it gradually, it was my auntie that I was moved to, which is my dad's sister. And what was actually supposed to happen, and I was told this at five, was that we were supposed to be handed back to our parents in 2001. We were never supposed to be taken off our parents. It's been, in the, it's been everywhere. And it was like, because they put it all in the newspaper and it was convictly on the news, they made out that we had just disappeared, like there was no sign of us anymore. And did you have you ever got any compensation for what happened? Okay. All right, well that's one thing we're going to look into. Um, so then you went to Bargo and you dealt with Campbelltown docks. Now I'm in Campbell, we're in Campbelltown at the moment still, and from what you know before I came here, that's why I'm here because I know it's one of the worst um, child protection agencies. In Australia, now I want to ask you a couple of questions. How many child protection officers have you dealt with, and which one is the worst, or which ones are just totally corrupt to you? Um, I've worked with a lot of those kind of things. Um, I've probably worked with probably about 13 of them. Yeah. Um, officers or just workers? Um, directly officers, like right. the and ones that right? take on the teams. Um, I can't say there wasn't quite, there was. Probably one that I actually remember that was really good to me. Well, I think these people need to be named the good ones, just as much as well, you need the bad. her name was Rita, and yeah. I don't remember her last name, but her name was Rita, and she was fired from the work that And which office was that from? <laughs> and what, what year was that? I was probably about 11, so 2002. And this is what I'm trying to get at, is that, um, you know, any good workers are getting fired, and the corrupt ones are training the ones that are corrupt, you know, from the beginning. If you're not going to be corrupt, you don't fit in. This is why we need federal police brought in young ones. Give them that as their training exercise, their first job. They join up for docks and no one knows that they are federal police. Would you agree with that? No, definitely. I'd say, well, the police, police seem to have more control. But yet again, there are a lot of good police officers out there that would agree with that because... A but a few of them actually have helped me and have told me that dogs are shit and have done nothing but abuse the power. And that is it. They abuse the power of their limits of what they can actually can and can't take. Now, I definitely agree on that they should be actually trained as police officers to become. And just for the ones that have actually kids out there, like, seriously, 